This is the heaviest known star in the universe. Known as R136A1, it weighs somewhere between 200 and 300 times the mass of the Sun. And it's so big, astrophysicists have had to come up with new explanations for how it may have formed. See, typical star formation is pretty well established by now. If you haven't kept up with your stellar astrophysics, let me give you the cliff notes. You start with an ultra-cold cloud of gas floating in space, just a few tens of degrees above absolute zero. For whatever reason, be it a nearby supernova sending a shockwave through, or a local twisting magnetic field line finally snapping, some sort of disturbance causes a slight overdensity in a small region of the cloud. And if the cloud is cold enough, the gravity of that slight overdensity can overcome the outward pressure of the gas, because the pressure gets bigger the hotter the gas. Anyway, at that point, a runaway gravitational collapse begins. At the center of the collapse, the gas gets hotter and hotter, beginning to glow in the infrared out of sheer compression of the gas. As inevitably, both the protostar and the gas cloud are spinning, the cloud forms an accretion disk circling around the stellar infant. In order for more gas to fall onto the star, it has to descend into the accretion disk, so it must jettison its angular momentum via gaseous outflows, which is exactly what happens. And so mass accumulates at the center. Eventually, if the gas cloud was particularly massive, nuclear fusion ignites the star before accretion is completed. As more and more gas falls onto these already lit protostars, the outward pressure grows because the stars get brighter and brighter and hotter and hotter. If the accretion disk still has not run out of material at this point or stabilized into a protoplanetary disk, eventually a balance is reached. The outward pressure matches the inward gravitational pull. This is called an Eddington limit. And it's generally accepted that this limiting phenomenon puts an upper limit on the mass of stars that can form, maxing out at around 150 times the mass of the Sun. But then, there's R136A1, which blows this limit out of the water. So one possible explanation, consistent with simulations, is that R136A1 is basically what happens when two already massive stars collide and merge. And the data we have works with this idea. Merged stars would appear younger than their unmerged counterparts, and R136A1 appears a million or two years younger than other nearby smaller stars. So, did R136A1 eat its twin? Maybe. 